And for the next presentation, we are joined by Respiratorius and CEO Johan Dott. Welcome, Johan. Thank you very much. I will then jump directly into the presentation, uh, talking about Respiratorius, as was founded in uh, 1999 as a research bin out from Lund University. The initial uh, aim was to develop new effective drug can candidate drugs for the treatment of respiratory diseases such as COPD and severe asthma, which was then a, uh, a therapeutic area lacking of effective drugs. In 2012, Respiratorius acquired the, uh, the company Res uh, Valkyria AB, and by that by means uh, it got the access or the rights to the oncology asset VL001, which has since then been developed through early stage clinical uh, studies and with very positive results and is now being prepared for a phase three study. Within the respiratory disease area, uh, we have now a candidate drug, uh, RCD405, which is being prepared for a phase one study. Just briefly, briefly about the business model of respiratorius. Uh, we are focusing on uh, uh, preclinical assets and develop them through early stage clinical development and uh, looking for partners, uh, strategic partners throughout the de development to um, uh, who can finance and uh, take over the asset uh, through the late stage clinical development and commercialization. Um, going directly to VL001, which is a dedicated formulation of Valproate for the treatment of the most common type of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Uh, Valproate is a uh, approved and well-tolerated well drug and a broad HDAC inhibitor um, and a sensitizer for cytotoxic uh, chemotherapy through remodeling and uh, the uh, decondensation of the chromatin. It uh, also has effect on the gene expression and cell cycle. And furthermore, which we have documented in our f uh, phase one study, it has a, a increases the expression of CD20, which is the target for rituximab. As I said, it is a well-known drug and has been used since the 60s to treat epilepsy patients. Uh, and since it then, it has a well-known safety profile, which significantly reduces the development risk. Uh, our phase 1-2A study uh, resulted in very strong results. Uh, we have a one-year uh, one overall survival of 100% and two-year overall survival of 96.8%. Uh, Valproate was then in the studies given as a pretreatment to the standard chemotherapy, or RSHOP, which is the first-line therapy uh, for diffuse large B-cell lymphoma and in most cases given as the first-line therapy. Uh, for comparison with the uh, standard chemotherapy, uh, we used a match pair analysis from the Swedish Lymphoma Re Registry uh, showing that we have a more than 10 percent, uh, percent points uh, increase of uh, overall survival. And um, also uh, with an another statistically, uh, statistical analysis showing that we have an 80% 80, 80 reduction of risk of mortality. EMA, we had a um, uh, scientific advice meeting with EMA uh, and they confirmed that respiratorius may move directly to a single pivotal uh, phase three study for marketing approval. Uh, with the uh, current data uh, and also as we are uh, progressing and we have a new formulation of Valproate, the data needs to be complemented by a pharmacokinetics results of the new formulation. The uh, PK study, which has been indicated, uh, initiated, uh, the pharmacokinetic study, uh, is of the, the new dedicated formulation of sodium valproate, which is combination of immediate and extended release pellets in a gelatin capsule. And the uh, pharmacokinetic study is a phase one study uh, in healthy study subjects 
to document the release profile of VL001. The dosing of the first set of study subjects has been performed and we expect preliminary results within this quarter, which means that by the end of this month, and we expect to complete the study or close out of the study during quarter two this year. And the new formulation uh, has a distinct uh, release profile and differentiating from available uh, uh, valproate containing drugs, which is important for the pricing of the new drug. Um, <clears throat> just a brief word on uh, recently emerging data uh, on Polyvi, which is a drug from Roche uh, in diffuse large B uh, cell lymphoma. It is a phase three study, uh, which is uh, then given uh, as the first line therapy. And the phase three study is a, has a control group of the standard chemotherapy. The important or interesting results is the, uh, the primary endpoint, which, uh, which is progress uh, progression free survival. And their, they st their study showed a uh, progression free survival of 76.7% uh, uh, compared to the uh, control group with a progression free survival of 70.2%. The uh, results from the Valfrid study, uh, study, which is the phase 1 to A study of, VL, uh, of respiratorius. Uh, we had a more than 84% progression-free survival. And also in, interesting to see that the, uh, the hazard ratio of the, um, uh, uh, the Polarex study is 73% 73, uh, 73 while we had 80%. And they didn't show any difference in overall survival where we had a more than 10% points increase in overall survival. So I think our res the, um, the strength of our results uh, with VL001 really shows uh, in this study. Next slide. Uh, <clears throat> the value enhancing milestones of VL, uh, VL001 during 2021 and 2022 is that we have a phase three study design confirmed by EMA and we are uh, currently discussing and considering whether we should have scientific advice also with FDA. And the, uh, the reason for having that is, uh, and the question is if it would add, uh, add further value to uh, the project in terms of the out licensing discussions. Uh, we have uh, performed a prototype selection and we have produced VL001 for the, for the uh, pharmacokinetic study. And we have started the pharmacokinetic study with the preliminary results expected within a month and close out during quarter two. We are uh, working on the uh, patent approvals uh, intensely, I would say, and we are still uh, anticipating a approval for the, uh, the, uh, the patent on the new formulation. And since before, we have also granted patents for the overall concept of using valproate in the combination with a chemotherapy. Moving forward to RCD405, um, uh, which is our lead candidate for a new treatment of COPD. As I said before, uh, in the um, uh, when respiratorius, the inception of respiratorius, there was a lack of effective new treatments for COPD. And 20 years later, it's the, still the fact. And all available therapies, uh, current available therapies, are only to treat the symptoms and not the disease. And as you can see in the quote, uh, there is a um, lack of novel bronchodilators based on a new uh, mechanism that can be combined with current th therapies. RCD405 um, um, is uh, targeting a new mechanism of action for bronchodilation. It is a new chemical entity uh, outside of previous patent substance uh, series and it has a documented anti-inflammatory and bronchodilatory properties. The uh, physiochemical properties of RCD405 is optimal for inhalation formulation 
And we also have documented it has a low bioavailability after inhalation and oral administration. And, and um, <clears throat> the milestones accomplished as, so far with RCD 405 uh, advancing it towards a, f a first in uh, man in human studies is the initial uh, safety studies performed in vitro that we have no critical findings. We have documented ex vivo and in vitro pharmacology and we have positive results from a efficacy study using lung tissue from different species including uh, humans. And we have also documented the, the multi multifunctional properties of RCD405 in terms of anti-inflammatory properties. We have a production process established and we have also um, the initial fundamental results from the formulation activities demonstrating that uh, RCD405 is a well-behaved substance optimized for uh, optimal for inhaled formulation. The value-enhancing milestones for uh, during 2021 and 2022 is um, for the um, uh, progressing the project towards a phase one study is that we have reported and concluded ex vivo e efficacy studies in different species. Ongoing is that uh, we have initiated the complete toxicology studies uh, which will be performed by inhalation in animals. And uh, ongoing is also additional clarifying mode of action studies as well as ongoing is the optimal formulation for inhalation, which is being performed in a collaboration with Econovo. Um, uh, and we, when uh, we have results both from the, uh, the um, toxicology study as well as the formulation studies, we will initiate the GMP, GMP production of uh, RCD405 for the clinical studies. We have uh, achieved a, a granted patent, a European patent for RCD 405, and we anticipate further more approvals going forward. Uh, least, last but not least is the, uh, uh, the announcement of a right issue and a spin out within Respiratorius. Just briefly about the transaction. First of all, we have a right issue of 45 million Swedish crowns, uh, which is the first step. And the second step then is a spin out of RCD and the other uh, respiratory sub substances dedicated for COPD and severe asthma. And the spin out uh, will be to the shareholders in Respiratorius. And the spin out will be a new entity listed on the Spotlight stock market. Going further in detail, the, the right issue is 100% guaranteed by subscriptions and guarantee commitments. The size is then 45 million Swedish crowns and the price per share is uh, 0.57 Swedish crowns. The timeline uh, for the subscription is start in by 18th of March and close of the uh, uh, subscription period is 1st of April. Use of proceeds will be 25 million Swedish crowns, will be allocated to RCD 405 and the other COPD projects as preparation for phase one studies and uh, related regulatory activities. 10 million Swedish crowns will be allocated to VL001 for clinical and regulatory activities, but, mo but mostly for business development, as this is what we are focusing on uh, VL001. And furthermore, 3 million will be allocated to intellectual property and working capital requirements for the company. The spin out, the asset will be all assets related to COPD and asthma, which means RCD 405 and the other uh, RESP projects, including uh, RESP 3000, since it's so tightly bound to the uh, RESP 2000 project. Uh, the asset will also include 25 million Swedish crowns, and the expected uh, share ratio for the spin out is one to five. 
and we anticipate to close the spin out by, uh, by quarter two this year. And the rationale behind the spin out is that we have two different, completely different, uh, two projects in completely different stages. VL001 ready for out -licensing, licensing and with limited uh, capital requirement going forward, while, resp uh, while RCD405 have several studies requir required and higher capital requirements. The split uh, avoids using capital from one project to another, and the, sp uh, the split also creates a transparency for the shareholders and the issues by means of that. And a uh, spin out can better highlight the potential value of RCD 405. Ending my presentation is the, uh, the important inf information and the disclaimer. Thank you very much. Thank you for that presentation, Joanna. It was very interesting. Um, I just have a couple of follow-up questions for you. Sure. So with this increased focus on getting a deal for VAL001, what should the shareholders or what could the shareholders uh, expect from that project going forward? Um, going forward, I think the, the, um, uh, it is clearly that we anticipate that the uh, pharmacokinetic study will be the end of uh, development activities and we will focus um, solely on finding a partner for that project going forward. That's what can be anticipated for the shareholders. When a deal will be in place, it's very hard to say but we will focus uh, um, on this uh, going forward after the closure of the pharmacokinetic study. But are there ongoing discussions now or you can't say anything about that either? We have, uh, since we started the exit process, so to speak, uh, which was done in a very early stage, uh, we have had interest for the project. There are uh, several companies that are interested, but as we have focused on the pharmacokinetic studies, we haven't uh, focused very much on the exit process as uh, by, I think it's clearly that when we have a clinical study, which is very important for the project, I think the, the interest is to see the results from the, uh, the PK study. And then finally, looking at the COPD project that you've explained here will be spun out mm. uh, in, and then distributed to the, to the shareholders. What will this mean for the project? You did talk a little bit about it, but if you could elaborate a bit. I think, uh, I think it's, uh, the stage is right now. I think the results that we have shown is that we have a very uh, strong project, a very interesting project, and I think the timing is right. Uh, so we can, f so the, uh, that entity can focus solely on the RCD4 or five project and um, um, we have ideas on the management but nothing is uh, on paper yet but it's it's going forward uh, at least well, we'll look forward to hearing more about it and yeah. during the year then thank yeah. you so much for coming thank you